Hey everyone, it's Liz from West Star Health and Healing, and I'm here today to do a video response to uh, Don Michelle at uh, Boho Taro. And a few weeks ago, she did a video that was um, current favorites, so favorites, forevers, and forgotten. And I loved watching that video, and it got me to thinking about, you know, what I thought about my decks in those categories. And so I thought I would do a VR. So currently, oops, someone's joining me. Currently, um, I'm using this deck. This is a current favorite, Soul Flower. I love this deck. I am an herbalist and a plant person, and so this is really, uh, a, really an all-time favorite of mine. Uh, Lisa has done a beautiful job at capturing the essence of the flowers, and she actually has um, written a uh, guidebook and um, I plan on getting that in the near future. So here are some of my favorites. This is Sunflower, Confidence, Rose, Joy, and I do have beach roses growing all around me and I do love this plant. Lady Slipper, Nettle, as an herbalist, I love nettle, it's such a healing, tonic plant, and Bleeding Heart. It's a beautiful deck. I think there are 44 flowers, um, and I'm hoping that Lisa maybe does an expansion deck. Another current favorite of mine is one that I think a lot of us are using right about now, and that is the Light Seers. I'm really enjoying this deck. I think it's absolutely beautiful, the artwork. It's very expressive, and I find it to be a really good reader. Um, here are some of my favorite cards. Uh, the Six of Swords, always one of my favorites. This is a fantastic Knight of Cups. Um, he's, he's got the red roses. He's got a heart tattoo, so he's wearing his heart on his sleeve literally the sun card as we start to say goodbye to summer um, loving that uh, knight of wands and she mixes up male and female expressions of the courts which i do like and then i think this is my favorite queen of pentacles another one of my favorites is the living wheel Astrology deck by Patrick Fogarty. I use this deck every day. I um, track the um, current uh, sun phase. So now uh, we are in Virgo. So I always have this out on my altar. Um, the current moose, moon phase. And right now we are in Taurus with a um, waning moon. And then I love doing the season. So I put the earth, and currently we are in the last few days of late summer. I, I travel a lot for work, and I bring this deck with me whenever I travel, and I set it up in my hotel room, and it just makes me feel at home. Um, I really love this deck a lot. I didn't expect to like it anywhere near as much as I do. I just bought it because I thought, you know, I'd like to explore a little bit more about astrology. But I had no idea that I would be using it every day. And a couple of weeks ago, I was up in Maine uh, in Bar Harbor. And I posted a picture and I got a message from Patrick saying, hey, wait a minute, are you in Bar Harbor? And I said, yes. And he said, I, I have my shop here. So I had no idea. I knew that he lived in Maine, but I didn't know it was Bar Harbor. And so um, I got to meet Patrick, which was really fun, and see his shop. So if you're ever in Bar Harbor, check it out. And if you're not in Bar Harbor, I think you should check out his deck. You will not believe how much fun that deck is. And it's really beautiful. So another one of my favorites is the New Era Elements. I really love this deck. I think it is just perfect for the times we are living in. Um, it's definitely not a hug deck. Um, it's a deck that 
you know, tells it like it is, and there are some controversial cards. Um, some people think it, it portrays animal cruelty, and um, I will say that it does have a few, three or four cards that are a little tough to look at with animals, but it's trying to wake us up about these things. Um, so for example, this is, um, this is uh, the Ten of Wands, oppression. So what do we think? Do we go to zoos? Do we support this kind of um, oppression of animals? It's just food for thought. Here's uh, stability. I love that one, that's the Four of Pentacles. Despair. So this does have keywords, which I know um, a lot of people don't like, but it is Toth-based. Um, I love the court cards, they're beautiful. This is the Mother of Fire. So the court cards are families, mother, father, uh, son, daughter. Uh, I love this Fool card. Yeah. Just about to begin an adventure, and what an adventure it will be, right? And then this is I, one of my favorite devil cards, and I know it's controversial, and I know some people um, find it uh, challenging to look at, but this is, this is real, <laughs> you know? What we do on one side of the globe, or one side of town, or one side of the country, has an effect on the other. So our capitalism, fascism, communism, our love of money, our security, our comfort has an effect um, on people on other parts of the globe. And we can't forget that. So when you really want to see the truth, hear the truth, be confronted with the truth, New Era Elements is a great deck. Another deck that I am really enjoying at the moment is Invoking the Goddess Oracle. This is by Lisa de Saint Croix, uh, who is a beautiful artist and a beautiful soul. Um, I've met Lisa a few times at the Reader Studio, um, and I love her work. She is, as I said, a beautiful soul and a wonderful artist. She's done a great job. I'm a sucker for a round deck. Uh, my first deck was the Mother Peace deck, which is a round deck, and so now I always have a bit of an affinity for um, round decks. This is Corn Mother. And so on the front of the card is a painting of the goddess, and on the back is a poem or a verse from the goddess, and then keywords. So here for Corn Mother we have uh, Nourish. Good health comes from good food. Eat mindfully as a sacred act. Um, this is Guadalupe, beautiful card. Baba Yaga, Frigid, Pele, and Mawu. So this is definitely a multicultural deck. Uh, Lisa has done a great job of being um, inclusive of many um, different goddesses from around the globe. So the next set of decks is called the uh, Forever. So these, the first one, favorites, is sort of like your current favorites. And the Forever decks are decks that will always be your favorites and that you fall back on and use a lot and that are sort of like your speak to your soul. And so since I am um, going with the Lisa de Saint Croix, uh, I will mention that this is one of my forever decks, the Tarot de Saint Croix. Uh, I got this deck when it first came out. It is so beat up. It is so ruffled on the edges. The box is faded, and you can see it's kind of got a little bit of worse for wear. But again, um, I travel, and I bring decks with me when I travel, and this one comes with me often. It's a beautiful deck. Uh, it, too, is an inclusive deck. It is um, normalizing of inclusivity, which is, I think, the goal. Um, I don't really like the idea of just sort of a token inclusiveness. Mm. But uh, Lisa has um, gone uh, the further step and has 
normalized diversity, and I like that. I think this is a beautiful Empress card. I have always liked this, and recently um, I read a post by Lisa that said this was um, an homage to her mother, so I, I love it even more. This is a beautiful uh, Ten of Pentacles. Um, it has a, it's a little bit of a more modern and a little bit of a different take on the Ten of Pentacles. But I like to think about uh, this in my household that, you know, when we gather together, we like to have fun. This is one of my favorite world cards. I actually have a print of this, which I, I got from Lisa. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, the wheel. The Magician, and I love the color on this. It's got this sort of coppery, yellowy, pinkish. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. And then one of my favorite star cards. So that is the Tower de Saint Croix, which has um, been a favorite of mine since I first got it. And then another favorite of mine, and I actually think um, that this is the deck that I have spent the most amount of money on. Um, it's a limited edition from the creator of the uh, Gaian Tarot by Joanna Powell Colbert. And it is, um, so here's sort of a standard tarot. And you can see that it is a lot bigger. I love, love, love the Fool card in this deck. It just, it, it's beautiful. Here she is, she's about to go off on an adventure. One of my favorite hierophants, again, I'm an herbalist and this has um, herbs in it. It has um, dandelion, um, nettle, comfrey, and yarrow, which are herbs that grow wild and that you can harvest and are really um, potent medicine. This is a beautiful wheel card. I'm not that big of a fan of the wheel card, um, but I love this, um, the seasons and the wheel of the year. I think, I think that's a great interpretation of the wheel. One of my favorite moon cards. And one thing I say a lot on my Instagram um, site is that I look at the moon card differently. I look at it as representational of the sacred feminine, the divine feminine, the goddess, the cycles of our lives, the waxing and waning. Um, I don't look at it as treachery and deceit. I, I actually think that that is rather misogynistic and I find it offensive, um, but that's just me. Uh, a beautiful queen of swords, guardian of air. And again, as an herbalist, this is one of my favorite cards, the three of pentacles, because um, I see this as myself and my friends getting together and making herbal medicine. A beautiful hermit card and a beautiful uh, world card, Gaia. So that is one of my favorite decks. And I actually have three Guy and Tarot, that limited edition, the Llewellyn, and um, the Schiffer, which I really don't use. I tend to mainly use the Llewellyn. Um, I also um, have to have here um, a Rider Waite Smith, because I am a Rider Waite Smith girl, and um, one of my favorite uh, Rider Waite Smith is the Hoi Polloi. And um, I was lucky to find this um, from um, someone that I know from the Reader Studio and got to buy it from him. I love the colors. I grew up in the late 60s and 70s, and so the colors are so 70s. This deck was printed in 1971, the year I graduated from high school. Uh, here is a Nine of Pentacles, Ace of Cups, Six of Wands. I just tried to pull cards that show the, the color scheme of this deck. Uh, Two of Swords, I love the colors. How about this Death card? 
beautiful colors in that. Strength, which is my birth card. I'm a star strength. And this is a great high priestess. So I love that hoi polloi. And um, it didn't come with the box or the booklet, but a friend of mine who is not a tarot person but had the hoi polloi um, tarot from her childhood photocopied the guidebook for me. So I, I now have that as well. Another one of my forever decks is the uh, Messenger Oracle by Sandra Kuntz. Here's the backs of the cards. I love square decks and round decks, decks that are different shaped. The artwork, the color, the vibrancy, this is, for me, this is kind of a hug deck. It, it's, it's beautiful. Um, Hummingbird has come to me um, a number of times um, as an animal ally, and so I really love this um, card. A message of love, fertile ground, uh, it's just, these cards are beautiful. Evolution. Heart of Fire. The Journey. Release the Past. And Gentle Awakening. One more. Woody the Woodpecker. So I think this deck is um, lovely to work with. Um, I often will use it um, in combination with uh, t uh, different tarot decks. And I, I think it's a beautiful, colorful, um, love-filled deck. So another one of my forever decks, and this is a little bit strange because I've actually, think I've only used this once or twice uh, in a reading and it is the um, Corte dei Tarocchi, which is an Italian uh, Il Menegello. And I actually sort of um, just fondle this deck. I just take it out from time to time, and I look at it, and I go through the cards, and I feel the card stock, and I, I know it's weird, but you tarot people, you get it. So here's the back. Look at the shape. They're long and skinny. Again, here's a um, regular tarot card. They are beautiful. The card stock is, um, it's heavy, but it's textured. And just to feel it in your hands, it's amazing. Um, so here is the Fool. The Magician, La Papessa, and let's see, here is the Queen of Pentacles, and let's get out a Five of Cups. So the color palette is uh, a little bit muted, but I mean, just just feeling this. I mean, it's just luscious, and um, it makes me want to get another Il Menegello deck. I'm so happy with this deck. I, I never regret buying it. And um, I asked um, Ben Jolivy, uh, AKA Tom Benjamin, I said, okay, you're always going on and on about pip decks. What do you think? I'm going to get one. We were at Reader Studios. So I'm going to get one. I'm thinking of La Corte de Tarocchi. And he gave me the thumbs up. So I was like, okay, if he says it's a go, it's a go. And I have never, ever regretted it. But is it weird to have a deck that you don't really use but that you love? I don't know. So then the final... Um, five decks that um, Dawn Michelle said for her categories was forgotten. And this month I am using this deck, the Druid Craft. And I was looking through a closet, kind of cleaning things up, and I came across this deck and I thought, darn, I haven't used this in forever. And I thought it was the perfect deck for um, September. It just has sort of an autumnal feel to it. 
and I'm going to be using the Wildwood next month in October. And I thought, okay, well, I see those decks. Um, they are both Will Worthington um, in terms of the artist. Um, and so I thought I'm going to give this a go. So I'm using this um, for a tarot challenge that I'm doing this month on Instagram. And I'm getting some really uh, great readings. And I know people don't like the borders on these cards, but it doesn't really bother me. Probably everyone has seen this and knows this deck. I like this Three of Swords. It's got the heart and the swords, but it it's portrayed in such a way that I think it has a, a, a gives you the ability to be more flexible about how you um, how you interpret that card. This is a gorgeous Eight of Cups, one of my favorites, and a lovely Four of Wands. So um, it was forgotten, but it has been remembered, and I'm really glad about that. Another uh, forgotten deck that I'm going to be using in, in probably October or November is the Dark Days Tarot. This is a beautiful black and white deck. I really like this deck again. It has one of my all-time favorite Queen of Cups. Check that out. That is a fabulous Queen of Cups. I love this chariot. And this is Ren Mercurdo. And what she did was the uh, majors are all black on white. And the minors are white on black. So it's uh, Moon. Knight of Cups. A beautiful... Empress, and I love this Ten of Cups, a long family table. Another forgotten deck, this is called the Wicca Pack, and um, the big enabler, uh, Kasha of Tarot Map, um, is how I found this deck, watching her um, videos, and I love her videos. But boy, I have to say I have bought quite a few decks because of Kasha. Thanks, Kasha. Um, and she had this deck, and this is the older version. There's a, a newer version. But I went on Amazon, and I did find the older version for, you know, cheap money. And the thing that I really like, and the, one of the reasons I wanted this older version was because of the backs of the cards. I love that. And the new one, the new version does not have backs like this. So this has um, things like um, broomstick for clearing, owl, cloak with all those chakras lit up, crone, neophyte, and cauldron so it, it it has sort of the tools of wicca and the people of wicca um it's it's a really uh interesting deck and i really like it and i will be pulling it out for october makes sense um, but i had kind of forgotten it it was on the back of a shelf and i just kind of forgot about it another forgotten deck that i absolutely love is the um l'oracle de reflet by uh, Celia Melville. This is um, a beautiful, uh, the art in this deck is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. And um, again, this is not a, a hug deck. It's, it, it's got some um, in your face cards. This is conflict, refuge, shadow, Armor. I love this one. Slow down. Fox. And then she has the seasons. Um, and apparently she, she did a video that shows how she made these cards. And what she did was she took material and stained it. And I think she said she used black walnut hulls. Um, not tea, but black walnut hulls to color the, the, um, those uh, brownish colors in the background. Um, here's the seasons. I thought I would start with autumn, 
because that's where we're coming into. So there's autumn, winter, spring, and summer. It's a beautiful deck, and again, this is a deck that I will be using as we move into the fall. And let's see, oh, I think this is the last one, yes. So, um, I did never have a Baba Studio deck. Um, the Victorian Romantic, the Alice, the Bohemian Gothic, they just never spoke to me. But I heard so much about the cardstock, the cardstock, the cardstock. I thought, okay, I have to get one of these decks. And so the one I decided on getting was the Tarot of Prague. Um, and I like this deck. I don't use it a lot, but um, it's cheeky. It has a sense of humor. Um, it's really pretty funny. Here is the chariot. Kind of reminds me of Mother Goose somehow. This is the High Priestess. Um, here is the King of Cups. Again, I just think it's cheeky. It, it's got a sense of humor. Um, here we see the Two of Wands. And again, that makes me smile. Uh, three of Swords with the Cherubs. And um, I pulled the Six of um, Swords because I, I do love um, I do love that card. So I think that's everything. Um, those are the decks that are my current favorites, my forevers, and the forgotten that I'm going to bring out hopefully in the next month or so. Um, thank you for joining me. And thank you to Don Michelle at Boho Tarot for this great topic. Um, hope you are all having a wonderful day. Ciao.